everyone, my name is Haley, and things are about to get very wet around here. It's time for another summer tradition, the water balloon fight. But before we get to it, I think we should talk about another way you and I can make waves, because what you do today can change the world around you. Usually, to make a wave, you need a body of water, like an ocean or a river. But for the kind of waves we're making, you need things like love and patience and joy. You can change the world with those things. Today, I'm hoping to make a wave of peace. In a water balloon fight, peace is the last thing you want. It's every person for themselves in a war of water where the most dry person at the end is the victor. But to demonstrate peace today, I'm gonna have a water balloon fight. But I'm not gonna throw a single water balloon. I think that's the best way to... Uh, hold on! I was not ready! I wanted to say something first. Okay, if I'm going to demonstrate peace, I have to be... This is not funny, people. I have some serious things to say about peace. So please, stop! Oh. Who? Throw that! Who threw that? Who? Who threw it? Nah. <laughs> In today's story, we're going to learn about two guys who are about to go to war and the one woman who was brave enough to stop them. So. Let's take a break from the water balloon throwing until we get back. <sighs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 25, verses 1 through 35. Near the town of Carmel lived a wealthy man named Nabal. Money, 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 always sunny, yeah, in a rich man's world, woo! The world was not so sunny for anyone who had to be near Nabal, like his servants. Our boss's picture is right here in the dictionary beside foolish person, see? Nabal was also terribly rude. You, bring me another leg of mutton. What's wrong with this one? It's touching those peas. But you asked for peas. I asked for tea, you blockhead. I shall dump these peas on your noggin. But unlike Nabal, Abigail, his wife, had a clear mind and a wise heart. She kept a close eye on her husband's estate and did her best to keep him from destroying their lives with his quick temper. Tell me, how was the flock this season? Have we lost any sheep to raiders? Not a one, my lady. But last season, our sheep were attacked by robbers a dozen times. We've had protection. Protection? How? David and his men have been camping nearby. As long as they've stayed near our flocks, they've kept us and the sheep from any harm. Very good. I've heard some say David will be king in Saul's place. Has Nabal thanked David for his help? Give thanks, Nabal. <laughs> <laughs> that was very funny, my lady. I'll consider the matter. Let me know if anything changes. The time for sheep shearing neared, and Nabal ordered a grand party to celebrate. Music, drink, mutton, mm, bread, cakes, raisins. Are you writing this down? Yes, sir. But no peas. No peas. As Nabal ordered the festivities, 10 young men arrived to bring a message from David. That outlaw, what does he want? David says, may you live long and everything go well for you. <laughs> Only what I deserve. He says, I hear that you are clipping the wool off your sheep. When your shepherds were with us, we treated them well. The whole time they were at Carmel, nothing that belonged to them was stolen. 
Please be kind to my men. Please give us anything you can find for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes? Who is this David? Many servants are running away from their masters. Why should I give food to men who come from who knows where? So, no? Vamoose! And don't let the door hit you on the way out. David's men quickly returned to camp. They found David's anger could be just as hot as Nabal's. Each of you put on your swords! In a short time, David and 400 of his men were marching up the mountain to confront Nabal. Word spread quickly. A servant raced to find Abigail. David sent messengers to Nabal and asked for a share of food, but Nabal was rude and shouted at them. You must do something or terrible trouble will come. Abigail didn't panic. Mm -mm. She took a deep breath. We have to get ahead of this. Take a list, please. On it. 200 loaves of bread, 200 bottles of wine, five sheep, a bushel of grain, 100 raisin cakes, uh, uh, 200 cakes of pressed figs. Any peas? No peas. Save those for Nabal. What else? Load it all on donkeys and start down the mountain. I'll follow. As David and his men quickly climbed the mountain, the caravan of donkeys and gifts made its way down the steep road. David's anger grew as he neared the mountain estate. He gripped his sword tightly. Everything we've done hasn't been worth a thing. I watched over this fellow's property, but he paid me back evil for good. I won't leave one of his men alive. What's this? Donkeys? And looks like food for a feast? At the back of the caravan, Abigail could see David as they met the donkeys. She took a deep breath hopped off the donkey and ran forward, throwing herself to the ground at David's feet. Pardon your servant, sir. Please don't pay any attention to that evil man, Nabal. He's always doing foolish things. But now the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. I've brought a gift for you and the men who follow you. Abigail dared to look up. David is watching her closely. The Lord your God will give you a kingdom that will last. That's because you fight the Lord's battles. He'll appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you killed people without any reason. The Lord your God will give you success. When that happens, please remember me. Slowly, David nodded. He removed his hand from the hilt of his sword and reached down to help her up. Give praise to the Lord. He has sent you today to find me. You have shown a lot of good sense and kept me from using my own hands to get even. He has kept me from harming you. Prepare a feast for your men. You've earned every bit of it. Mm. Go home in peace. David accepted the gift and turned back instead of facing down Nabal. Abigail returned home to find her husband holding his giant party. Nabal! I've made peace. Peace? Ugh. Hate him. <laughs> Though David didn't kill him, Nabal soon met a dreadful end. Abigail and her entire household were saved because she chose to get creative and make peace. David was angry, right? so angry he was ready to go to war with Nabal. He wanted revenge. It's a good thing Abigail stepped in when she did. She made what could have been a really bad situation better by helping David see things in a different way. Abigail helped make peace. Now, there are three types of people in this story, and chances are you're gonna be like every one of them in your life. You could be like Nabal, who says or does something that makes someone mad. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, got you in the bag when you weren't even playing. The best way to make peace if you're a Nabal is to admit you're wrong, say you're sorry, and make things right. Someday, you could be like David. You get mad at someone and you wanna get revenge. Oh, who? Throw that! 
that. If you're like David and you want to make peace, sometimes it helps to think about the consequences of your anger. What will happen if I lose my temper? What will happen if I get revenge? And then there's Abigail, the peacemaker. When you're like her, it means you're standing outside of someone else's fight and you can see a way to make peace. Hey, you two are supposed to be friends. Now, hand them over, hand them over. Thank you. Thank, thank, what? Warren, hand it, oh. Peacemakers can help others see their situations in different ways. They can stop arguments and fights before they get way out of control. <laughs> Water balloon fights are one thing. They're supposed to be fun, but other fights can hurt feelings, damage relationships, or even worse. So be an Abigail and make a wave of peace. The one thing to remember today is this. You can help others make peace. If this doesn't come naturally to you, th that's okay. Ask God for help. And remember, when you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit living inside of you can also help you make peace. <laughs> well, now it's time for the actual water balloon fight. So I'll see you next time. Huh. Well, I guess we used up all the balloons. <laughs> Nope. Hey, well, don't count your corn until it's thrown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how you throw the corn. That's how you throw the corn. Simmer that's how down you throw the corn. Now. Okay. Simmer down. Okay. Ooh, oh. I got you now. Okay, okay. Well done. <laughs> well done. But are you ready for this? Oh, oh! <laughs> yes! I'm that. the king of the corn. Oh, oh, I'm the king of the corn. Hey! Yeah. Oh. 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 How do you like it? Yeah. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And today we'll be making waves right here in the middle of my basement. Because you don't need to be somewhere special in the world to make a difference. Oh, no, not at all. You can do it anywhere, anytime. Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes people have special sporting events to raise money for those in need? Well, that's what we're going to do today. Yeah, John and I have set up a nine-hole miniature golf course in here for our first annual Putting for Change Miniature Golf Invitational. Mm -hmm. Oh. Here's how it works. For each round, we'll try and put a golf ball into a hole. The person who hits the ball in the hole with the fewest number of shots wins the round. The loser of each round has to put some change into this jar. Mm. At the end of the tournament, everything in the jar will be given away to help change the world. Ooh, that sounds great. Let the games begin. Yes. So here we are at hole number one. It's a standard par three through the tube or around the clown type of hole. I'm going to uh, hit it around the clown because the tube never works for me. And oh, make sure you watch out for the squirrel head at the end. That guy is nuts. <laughs> LT off first. <clears throat> John lines up the shot. It's a pretty straight shot despite the obstacles. Will he get a birdie or will he choke? leaving the door open for the far superior golfer. You do realize I can hear you, right? I, no, I, I just, I thought it would add to the overall feel of the tournament. And well, it doesn't. Wow. Not bad. Yeah. <clears throat> You're in a bind now, though. I am. Two. 
Oh! Two! Beat that, I huh? Will. Yeah, two! I will. I will. Oh! You know what beats two? Yeah. What? Okay, okay, Hole fine. One. Yeah, great Hole job. Great one. job using the Hole two. And, and you yeah, win a trip what? to the change jar. Sure, sure. I got change right here. All here, right. Here I, I hear, I love that jingle. Boom. There you go. Great right. job, Brandon. Woo! Hole number two. All right. Hole number two. Over the water, through the woods, past grandmother's house to victory. <laughs> you all right? Yeah. You need a tissue? No, I'm fine. Sure. Yeah. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> I think that means you owe the jar. Woo! Right? Is that what the rules say? That's what that's what the rules say. I forget the rules. Is that what they say? The change, you know? You deserve, you gotta put change in there. You gotta Oh that's what they say! <laughs> it's on now. Oh yeah? Yeah! Come on! Bring Montage. it! Bring it! If you miss that, I win. I remember. I just wanted to make sure. Would you stop that? What? Nothing. Oh! Oh! No! <laughs> I win! I win the first annual putting no. to change nine home miniature golf invitation. No, no. Ah, pay up. You distracted me. You pay up. No, you. 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 <laughs> Look what Our you jar did. Our jar of change. I won. You sit on a golf squirt. cart of lies. No, I don't. No, you distracted no, me. I did guys, not. Hey, I'll show you how to putt. <laughs> you know what I think it's time for? Bible, Bible story, story time with, with Kellen? Kellen? That's right. How's it going? He's he kept distracting me, but no, no. actually, I wasn't really asking because I can tell how it's going. But first, I did want to say this. I love the idea of you guys having a golf tournament. You do? 100%. There are a ton of lives you guys could change. That's See, what if I've you been trying just, to say. Bah, 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 bah. But you're missing one of the best ways to do that. We, we are? are? Yep. And that's what today's story is all about. So just sit back and listen. This story is about an amazing woman named Abigail. Hello? A woman who helped make peace and saved lives. We'll hear her story today on Behind the Bible. Alrighty then. Right. So the story of Abigail actually begins with King David. Well, he wasn't a king yet. I know that. I'm the narrator. I just wanted to make sure. Before he was king, David and 400 of his men were hiding in the desert from King Saul. Living in a desert is not fun. It's burning hot. There's not enough food or water. And it's burning hot. And just so we all know, David didn't give video interviews because cameras wouldn't have been invented for thousands of years. Are you gonna let me do my thing? For now. While in the desert, David and his men met some shepherds who worked for a wealthy landowner named Nabal. 
We were friends with the shepherds. We even protected them from danger. So at sheep sharing time, I sent some men over to Nabal to ask for whatever food he might be able to spare. Since we were living out in the desert, where it's burning hot. Now, Nabal might have been a wealthy landowner, but he was also a meanie face. I didn't know David. I didn't know his family. Who cares that he, uh, uh, protected some of my workers? So when his men came and asked me for help, I told them, oh, I told them, why should I give what's mine to people I don't even know? When David found out how Nabal responded, he was very angry. Yeah, I was pretty mad. I think I said something like, may God punish me greatly if I don't get revenge. So yeah, I was ticked. This is where Abigail comes into the story. She was Nabal's wife. I was getting to that. I know, but I, I like helping. When Abigail heard how angry her husband had made David, she jumped straight into action. I mean, what was I supposed to do? David had 400 men and he wanted revenge against my husband. So I loaded up bread, meat, wine, fig, oh, and raisin cakes, and I took them to David. When I saw him, I bowed down and I said, please pay no attention to that wicked man, Nabal. His name means fool. He's always doing foolish things. I'm sorry. Then she said to me, the Lord has kept you from using your own hands to get even. Someday, the Lord will appoint you ruler over Israel. When that happens, you won't have to worry about how you got revenge without any reason. That was exactly what I needed to hear. Abigail's words brought peace. And the raisin cakes didn't hurt either. Abigail changed the whole story. She stepped into a bad situation that she didn't even start and helped make peace. Abigail changed the whole story. She stepped into a bad situation. I already said that. Oh man, meanie face. Sorry, let's make peace. Fine. This has been Behind the Bible. Wow, that makes me feel silly. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Hey, we all get caught up sometimes, like when you're in a competitive game or when someone feels like they've been wronged. Those feelings are real and that's okay. But how we deal with those feelings, that's what's important. Making peace isn't always easy, but if you've put your trust in Jesus, God gives the Holy Spirit to help. I'm sorry, John, I was being distracting on purpose. And I'm sorry that I was being a meanie face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we ruined the first annual Putting for Change nine hole miniature golf invitational. Are you kidding? I told you, I love the idea. You guys can change lives, especially when you learn how to make peace and spread that peace to others. And you know what? I'm gonna be your first sponsor. You, you will? will? Yep, which means <laughs> much better. I'll see you guys. Reveal the question. What are some ways to make peace? Well, saying you're sorry can help. Or talking about what's wrong. Yeah, maybe you could uh, try and look at things from other people's point of view. Yeah, and remember, you can be a peacemaker even if you're not the one in the argument. Yeah, totally. Hey, hey, you wanna play another few rounds? You bet. We'll see you next week for a brand new show. See ya. Oh. Here, 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 chicken. Chicken in the can. Empty the pens. I'm gonna make this. No, those are the obstacles. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> oh! Not even close. Oh man. You wanna try? Blame it on the chicken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I do wanna try. Here we go. All right. Oh, you're gonna do the yeah, little pool go. cue. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everybody. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any change? Good night, everybody. <laughs>